Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. Look what we are messing with today. One of our customers, Mike, brought us, brought us this cool Bride of Pinbot, the machine, pinball machine. And it's got some issues. He wants us to fix it up, and then he wants us to do some cosmetic stuff on it. So we're going to work on this and uh, film what we do to it a little bit. And you guys and girls can come along with us. Check it out. Looks fantastic. What a cool game. So this was the sequel to Pinbot, of course. The Bride of Pinbot. So we'll just show what kind of shape it's in right now. Still got the original side art. It's been touched up a little bit. We may end up uh, putting new side art on it. We'll see what Mike wants to do. It's got some purple touch up here and there on the back box. The uh, lockdown bar has been repainted at some point. This side you can see the touch ups a little better because of the light. They just get scuffs on them after a while. We're getting to the point where a game like this is pretty valuable. You know, just because they only made so many of them and people love it. It's a good game and everybody knows it. So I'd like to confirm that Python did the art. I believe he did. I would assume he did. He did not. Illustration by Yalsi. Concept and design by Python Angelo in 1990. If you don't know about him, he was a very creative guy. So, uh, interesting. I love the how they're fixing her up. Making it happen. Okay. So I've got a whole list of stuff here that is acting up on this one that we're going to go through. It's had some touch-up done to the playfield. So we may end up repairing some of that and see if we can make it look a little better. Pretty good shape, considering it's 31 years old now. It's one of the things he mentioned to me about cosmetics is there's a divot there in the shooter lane that's a little rough. Usually stuff like that. Well, first of all, it's a customer's machine, so we're going to do what they want to do, not what we want to do. Usually it's stuff like that I don't worry about too much, but that one is pretty bad, so you probably would need to do something about that. A lot of times they'll be wearing the shooter lane and I don't really mess with it. But that one, that's pretty rough. That might actually cause problems with the ball. So it's been played, you know, and it's got some wear. Now he's been talking about the ramps. Um, I believe maybe this has been cracked. That may be one of the things he's talking about. I, I would imagine that post wouldn't even be there unless it's supposed to hold the ramp. So... That part of the ramp is cracked. Um, we'll see what he wants to do about that. We might see if we can find a good use set or if we need to do new. Um, this one here is pretty severely cracked. It's been uh, glued back together. Got something going on here. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that where there's nothing holding it on the other side. So that might need a little attention. Eh, maybe that's right. I don't know. Looks a little weird though. But there are two screws over here, so it would hold it, but that's a little strange. Um he was saying that there's the paint needs touched up a little bit on the mask. We'll see about that. The helmet. He said there was a scratch somewhere to look for. We'll figure that out. Um I would classify this a nice clean machine. It's got a little wear, but it's she's a clean machine. I like it. Okay, so let's. I'm going to read over some of his notes, things that he was thinking about um, 
that have uh, that were uh, that he knew about. Uh, check the connector in the back box. He said that there is a connector burnt up in the back box, and he replaced it himself. But he didn't think he did a very good job at it. He wants us to look at it, so we're going to do that. I'm going to imagine that's the connector for the general illumination, but we'll see. The coin door flap. <laughs> so the coin door flap is just sitting in there, or it's broke or something. Yeah, it's broke. So we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, he did some JB weld. He wants us to clean it up and make it look better. We will. Check the flipper wiring. So the flipper was all screwed up. They figured out it's because it didn't have the end of stroke capacitor, and he uh, he bought a whole new setup and swapped it and all of that. But he didn't have a real good understanding of the schematics, and he couldn't find a good picture showing how to put the wiring on. So he did it the way he thought it was, and he thinks it's right, but he wants us to check it out. Uh, the end of stroke switch I think needs to still be added. I believe he said he's. I think he sent that with us. Let's see here. I'm checking. Yep, we got an extra in the stroke switch, so it wasn't added in. Um, the ball will not stay in Pinbot's eye, uh, the bride's eyes. So something's going on there. We will figure that all out. That'll be fun to figure it out. They just land in her eyes and she spits them out. Look, people, by the way, this game... If you're the type that doesn't like uh, double entendre, <laughs> blue language, you ain't going to like this game. So whenever I say stuff like the balls land in her eyes and she spits them out, that is very mild compared to some of the crap that is going to go <laughs> on by the time we get this machine fixed. It was a uh, Python Angelo. That's all you need to know. I didn't design it, people. Uh, uh, he'd like us to put new pinballs in it. The ones that are in it he, are worn. Uh, considering we're probably going to put an LED kit in it. What? What is that? I'm going to put LEDs in a pinball machine. Yep, that's right. If the customer would like us to put LEDs, we will put LEDs. Now, on a, you know, this we're, by this point, we're getting to the, the era of game, 1990. Yeah, I can see why you'd put LEDs in them. A lot of the games we work on are early solid state games or EM machines. I just don't think those look right with LEDs. This, it would add a little bit to it. If you've watched all of our videos, and if you haven't, go back and watch them. Right? But if you've watched all of our videos, you know I put, I put LEDs in a few games. Like I put a few of them in uh, the, uh, the Bad Girls pinball machine we did just because it kind of helped the theme and all of that. And, you know, so I'm not, I'm not completely against LEDs. It's just I'll... Certain games look good with them, certain don't. This one, you're talking about a, a uh, female robot machine uh, with all kinds of crazy stuff going on. LEDs would probably look really cool in this. So we're probably going to do an LED kit. Uh, he would like to change out the start button with like a lit start button that kind of uh, throbs while it has credits on it or, or throbs. I don't, I don't know if we can do that completely. I think we can, but we'll have to figure out how to do that. Um, touch up the paint on the play field if we can. We might do that. Uh, we was wondering about an overlay for the play field, but that might be an expensive proposition. But we'll, we'll look into that. There is some serious wear right around this area. It's pretty rough. So we'll have to see what our options are. Uh... He was considering maybe doing some kind of black side rails to better match the the uh, lockdown bar. So maybe something like that on the uh, armor, I guess they call it. Uh, and then maybe new side art. So we'll check that out. I think there's a couple other little things that we were talking about on email that we'll uh, we'll look into as well. But that's kind of what we're doing. Now we have the board set is actually out of the machine, and uh, we're going to end up uh, reinstalling that here in this video, or soon at least. Well, it depends on, I guess, what we run into in the back box. So we'll see what's going on with that. Now we've got a little bit of stuff like the cabinet is separating a little bit here. 
this is just hanging out. That's not how it ought to be. That's a little better. So we got a little, got a little bit of stuff we got to get right. Um, and we'll try to get this thing in much better shape. But it, it doesn't even work right now because the boards aren't in it. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that, that uh, glass off. And then let's look underneath the play field and just see what we're starting with. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. Everything looks good inside. A little dusty. Now, if you've never played this game, um, it has this incredibly complex mechanism in the back play field that is a face that actually turns around. Uh, so there's a motor that does that, and that's what's inside this big box. But because of that, you can imagine how expensive that must have been to develop. So the 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 um, you know the bottom line on that is lots of money, right? The bill of materials. So because of that, the rest of the playfield actually doesn't have a lot going on. So there's not a ton of stuff on the bottom of the playfield. Actually, you've got a lamp board here in the middle. Um, a few smaller ones here and there. You've got two kickers. You've got two flippers. You've got the out hole ejector like normal. Um, not much going on. So there's just not a ton of expensive parts or anything, which means that it's, you know, easy to troubleshoot and with the exception of the face. What am I seeing down here? Yeah. So this has been worked on a little bit and there's some tape on the gray and yellow wire. We'll have to figure out what that's for. But everything looks pretty good. I guess that should all be up in there. Everything looks pretty good. Very cool. All right, so uh, let's look in the back box and see what condition that's in. I don't see anything down here that uh, is going to keep us from trying to fire it up. Now, one thing I did notice, uh, remember one of the things that he mentioned was acting up was that when the balls land in the face's eyes, it spits them out and doesn't hold them when he thinks it should and stuff like that. Well, there are four pinballs in it. But there's only supposed to be three. So sometimes when you have an extra pinball, it does stuff like that. It 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 doesn't understand why something's where it is, and and makes stuff fire out when it shouldn't, and hold when it shouldn't, and kick out two balls into the out lane and all that. So uh, that might be a thing. Okay, so you can see the heat marks just from the bulbs. That's really common. And then the, the uh, light baffle is cracked up a little bit, but it's not really cracked up in a way that would change the way the lights work. If you remember on the um, translight, that's her leg, and there's little numbers that light up on her leg. Okay, so the boards are out of it because he sent them off to be repaired. Um... This is the sound board, and it's been replaced with a brand new one. So that shouldn't be an issue, but we'll look into it. And also the display has been replaced um, with a new one. So let me fold this down, and we'll find that connector that he's talking about. Okay, so there's two that have been replaced. Actually, this one, though, looks really good. It looks like maybe it's older because the pins aren't as shiny as the other one. That one doesn't look like anything's wrong with that one. We'll double check where the wires are just to make sure they're not in the wrong spot. This must be the one he's talking about here. If I can get it out of there where we can look at it a little better. Yeah, so it's a little, nah, it's a little touchy, you know. So basically, sometimes it's hard to get the, the, the things crimped on there right where the wire is down inside of the connector instead of wires being outside of the connector. You can get away with it like that, but we'll redo it for him since he was worried about it. Um, and he was talking about um, 
the order they're in and stuff. I don't think it'll, well, some of these are different colors. Some of them are yellow and some are yellow and white. I would imagine this is GI stuff, but we'll, I'll look it up just to make sure. Uh, but yeah, we can we can fix that up no problem. That won't be any big deal. Whenever we look at the board, it'll help too because you can tell what connects together and all of that. But all in all, everything looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to clean it up a little bit and then we're going to start putting the boards back in it and we'll see if anything will boot up or if we get any power or, or what. He, he sent the boards off to be repaired, but the tech uh, that repaired them said to have somebody look the thing over before we, he just plugged them back in just to make sure that it didn't fry anything. So uh, like we always do, we'll start at the wall. So we'll start where the power comes in the machine. The first board that it runs into would be the power supply. Okay, so before we put in the power supply, the other, the other wiring he was concerned about was the flippers. And I think he was saying the, the right one, but it looks like they've both been replaced. And so there's a couple little things um, that I'll show you that, that jump out at me. And again, by the way, people, this is not one of those things where the guy screwed up, didn't know what he's doing, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is somebody who didn't have anybody to work on his games, is trying to work on them and do it the best he can, doesn't doesn't really have a background reading schematics and everything so he's just you know trying to figure it out as he goes so it's not it's not uh, oh he, he, he's stupid for doing that or something I did stuff like this every time whenever I first started working on them so it's it's not something that you just naturally know it's something you have to learn and the, the main way you learn is by screwing stuff up so there's stuff a little bit off one of the minor things is um, they're real tight through the play field. So this is the flipper shaft right here that comes down. And so when this flipper goes in, it's turning this shaft and the bat is on the shaft and that's what makes the flipper actually move. So as that goes in, it turns that shaft, which makes the flipper move. Okay. So one thing that it needs to have a little bit of play through the play field. So it's so tight that you're getting a little bit of drag where this is hitting the plastic bushing. So you should be able to grab the flipper and pull up on it a little bit through the play field. And this one, it's pretty tight. Like I'm pulling it right now and it's not even moving. Maybe just barely. You want it to have a little bit of play, maybe 16th of an inch or something like that where you can pull it up a little bit and that way it's just loose enough that whenever it moves it doesn't hang now it's working but if there's friction there that'll slow the flipper down so it'll make it where it's not quite as strong and this one's the same way it's just so tight through the play field that there's no play so it it's going to cut down a little bit of your power and make it where it's not quite as strong so we'll loosen that up and uh, and get those a little better and so he was concerned about one of the two of them he wired um, and didn't know if he, if he wired it backwards. I haven't looked at the schematics, um, so I don't know which wire is the power wire. Sometimes you can find a fuse and figure it out from that. Let's see if I see one. Hmm. We'll look at the schematics and figure it out. But basically, the t both of them are wired backwards. So one of them's wired one way and one of them's wired the other way. So one of the two of them's wrong. The only thing that really matters is the diodes in there. So see how the diode has a stripe on one side? Let me see if I can get it to focus better. Yeah. See the stripe? So there's a diode from here to there and another one from there to there. So there's a stripe on this side of this diode and on this side of this diode. So the power lead always goes to the side with the stripe. So that's gray, a uh, blue and gray. I believe that may be the power. Okay. And then on this side, blue and yellow is going to the side with the diode. Now notice they're turned completely around. I haven't I assume that's right because it, ha you know, they have to. The, the shaft has to go through the hole, so it's, it must be lined up in the right spot. The shaft there and the shaft there. So that must just be how they're, they've got them mounted, but they're mounted completely backwards. Okay, so because of that, 
what you, what you really need to pay attention to is the orientation of the band on the diode. So the blue and yellow is going to the power side of this, and the blue and gray is going to the power side of this. That's probably right, but we'll, we'll confirm in the schematics. But then on this one, that line immediately goes to the end of stroke switch, and then the other side of the end of stroke switch, this blue wire, goes to the middle. But on this one, instead of the end of stroke switch going to this side, it goes to this side. So either the end of stroke switch is in the wrong spot on this one, or it's in the wrong spot on this one. Something's going on, but we'll figure all that out. It won't be any big deal. Uh, maybe we'll do that first before we plug anything in, just to make sure we don't fry something. But uh, he never plugged it up with it like that because he wanted to confirm just to make sure it was right. And that's what we're going to do. So let me look in the schematics and we'll figure out how it's supposed to be wired up. All right, folks, so here's the manual. Power driver board sends power on the gray and yellow wire and the blue and yellow wire. So we've got the left one I think is wrong, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Looks like both of them might be wrong. The gray and yellow wire goes down to the, this is the coil, goes down to the side with the band on it on that first lug. Okay, And then the end of strokes wire is always on the middle lug and it goes out to the end of stroke switch. And then the other side of the end of stroke switch goes to the last lug. So this is your coil there. So these are your three lugs on the flipper coil. And so gray and yellow runs to the side on the end with the band on the diode. And then you get two wires, one from the middle and one from the last lug. And then the blue and gray wire goes to the last lug. And then on the other side, lower right flipper, the blue and yellow wire goes to the lug that has the band on it. And then the middle band goes to the, I mean the middle lug goes to the end of stroke switch. The other side of the end of stroke switch goes to the last one. And then the blue and violet wire goes to the last one. Now the, these two wires, by the way, run off to the switch on the cabinet. And it connects the ground, which makes them fire. Okay. And also the end of stroke switch, it doesn't matter which blue wire you connect to here and which blue wire you connect to there because the capacitor uh, is not polarized. It can go either way. So that's what we're looking at. So we'll go, uh, we'll go get the wires right in the machine, make, get that permanently fixed, uh, and then we'll. Uh, I'll leave the, the the flipper bats the way they are now, so we can see if there's any difference in the strength after we work on them later on. Okay, but we'll go ahead and uh, um, we'll go ahead and get the wires in the right spot. Okay, so the right one's just fine. The blue and yellow wire goes to the side with the diode, so it's running in right, and then the last two have the flipper and the flipper switch on it, and then the last one is uh, blue and violet. But on this side, the gray and yellow should be running to the side with the diode on it, so this one should be over here, which means this one should be over here, and then this, this one end of stroke switch wire should be over here as well. So that's just a little bit off, but we'll, we'll swap them real quick. All right, folks, we got them swapped around. The only other thing I saw that I didn't like um, was that the cap, you got to be careful with these capacitors, like the end of stroke switch capacitor. That wire was like touching the screw, and if you look, there's some solder on there that's touching the plate. So basically when you do that, what's going on is you just electrified everything metal that's connected together, which is fine as long as you're only doing it with one of them, <laughs> you know. If any other wire touches anything metal, once you've, once you've got that touching this, now all of this is electrified in a certain way, right? It might be that it's all now connected to ground, or that it's all connected to the flipper switch, or it's all connected to the middle lug or something. Once you, once you do that, if anything else connects to any, any of that stuff that's metal, you'll have a short. So you want to try to keep it where nothing electrical is ever touching any of the metal stuff. So I'm going to clean that up just a little bit, just so that nothing um, is touching it. On these on these caps, you can put like heat shrink tubing on that so that they it can't touch anything and and short the uh, short the uh, the power to any of the metal. So that's the only other thing I saw that wasn't absolutely perfect. So 
Mike, you did almost a perfect job. You did really good. This one you got pretty much dead on the money. It was no problem. That one had a couple little issues. Didn't take much to fix it. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll end up replacing that in a stroke switch too whenever we uh, get farther into it. But I'll leave it like that just so we can see if it makes a difference whenever we replace it. Okay, so I think we got the flippers where they're not going to blow anything when they come on, hopefully. Knock on plastic. I think this is our other connector with the yellow wires and the yellow and white wires. So we're in the schematics and basically off the transformer. Uh, I think that says 6.3 volts. That's a common voltage that you see in pinball machines that runs the, the uh, illumination on the play field like we were talking about. And it looks like it comes off of the transformer and then it runs to a connector that probably runs back into the back box. And then these are probably the wires that are coming up out of the bottom. And then this is the connector, I believe, that's been replaced. And uh, it looks like they might be... Some of them might be in the wrong spot, but we'll figure it out. Um, we will not hook that up until we make sure that it's right. But basically it's going to run onto the power driver board. The yellow wires are going to run to these lines which are fused. Okay, And then the yellow and white wires are going to run to these lines which are the uh, general illumination triax. And you see that one of those wires that's connected over here to the other ones goes directly to ground. So this is your ground for your lamps. Right? But it's AC. But this is the ground, and then this is the lines that actually turn on the lamps on the playfield. I suppose this is so that they can turn them on and off. So you might have one for the head, one for the left side of the playfield, one for the right side of the playfield, one for uh, the ramps, one for the face, something like that. Okay, folks, so we have the boards that were uh, sent off to be repaired. This is the driver board. Let's see if we can get it out of there. It was sent to a very reputable repair place. Um, there shouldn't be any issues with that, but they put a note that says, all boards and electronics should be installed in your game by a professional. Any electrical problems your machine is exhibiting may cause board failure or permanent damage to your part or game if installed while these problems exist. We cannot be held responsible for any damages to your component, machine, or other personal property. If you purchase the new board, please follow the manufacturer's installation instructions. We are not responsible when customers order the wrong part. Okay. So basically they don't want, if, if the coil on your flipper is burned up or on, on something, it could very easily, as soon as you put this board in, fry one of the transistors or something, you know. So you kind of need to check that stuff. So this is the driver board. I don't know how it mounts in there yet, but we'll figure that out. Everything looks cool. And let's look on the back. I believe he tested it. it. Looks like he didn't have to do much to repair it. You've got um, there's a lot of heat on that transistor, but you know it's common, so we shouldn't have to really do much to this. It was just uh, looked over by a, like I said, a reputable place. Okay, and then this is the CPU board. Okay. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. Okay, so this looks nice and clean. By the time they got to the WPC stuff like this, the uh, um, the uh, they had reduced the the CPU down to a kind of small board with the batteries on it. <laughs> um, but the driver board, you know, they had separated out into all the other stuff. So some of the earlier boards, like System 11, everything was on one big board. But by this time, they had started compartmentalizing it a little bit. I believe, I'm not positive, but I believe that the newer Sterns are back to it's just one big board with a whole bunch of stuff on it. Um, but no batteries, so that's good. So this one has had the batteries removed. 
NVRAM installed. It has the updated ROM and has been game tested in May. So everything should be cool. I believe it will be. That's what we're looking at. Uh, I can see at least a connector has been replaced. Everything on the back looks fine. This ribbon cable is new too. He t he mentioned that uh, they told him they mentioned to him about replacing a ribbon cable, but I'm wondering if they were just telling him that they had replaced a ribbon cable. Um, let's see how many pins that is. Thirty four pin ribbon cable. Hmm. We'll check all that out, but that's what we're going with. All right, so we're going to go ahead and install the driver board in the game, and then we're going to look at how that connector connects the one that's that's been redone, and then uh, repin that so that we get a nice connection before we turn anything on. Okay, so I went back into the schematics, and I wrote down right where all those wires go, and then we're going to look. Now, pin 9 they have as the key, and it is pin uh, connector J115. So we were on the right part of the schematics. So pin 9 doesn't have anything on it, and that's correct. Okay. Pin 1 is a jumper between pins 1 and pin 3. Well, that ain't right. So that would jumper the yellow and white to the yellow. So we don't want to do that. That's wrong. And there's actually... The yellow wire and the yellow and white wire are both in pin 2. So that would be a problem too. I don't want to do that. If we turn that on, I th that would cause some problems, I think. Basically, you would be connecting... Yeah, that wouldn't be good at all. Basically, you'd be connecting both sides of the transformer together. Don't want to do that. So those are definitely wrong. Uh, so pin 1 is going to the wrong spot. It's jumping over to pin 3. doesn't need to do that. Pin uh, 2 is both wires, so it shouldn't be like that. Pin 3 is jumper to pin 1. That shouldn't be like that. Um, hmm. Okay, so pin 4 is a jumper and a yellow wire, and it jumps over to pin 5 as well. So 4 and 5 are correct. Pin 6 is a yellow wire, and that would be correct. Pin 7 is a yellow and white wire that jumps over to pin 8, so that is correct also. Uh, pin 10 is a yellow and white wire that jumps over to pin 11, which is also yellow, and, which, which, you know, which jumps over to pin 11, so that's correct. And pin 12 is yellow and white wire. So everything was correct except these first three aren't right. But we're going to go ahead and replace all of them just so it's nice and fresh. We're going to reuse that connector because it's brand new. You can actually just push these little the, the terminals back out with this. But we're actually going to uh, uh, crimp new uh, connectors on it just so everything's copacetic, people. That's the word of the day. All right, so we use crimpers like this. I like these because you crimp it around the thing and it's got two little levels in there that the jaws crimp on. One's tighter because it's just a wire and then the other part crimps on the part that's the insulation. So it crimps it in two different ways. You can buy these on Amazon. We've got a link on our website if, you're, if you need any of these. Um, I've switched the jaws around on mine because I'm left-handed, but they come with the jaws the other way, so you can use them with your right hand. Um, but you can buy those if you want. Go to our website, lionsarcade.com, and we have links to a bunch of the stuff we use in our repairs on our website on the parts page. Go check that out. And if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, if you click one of our Amazon links before you do that, um, it gives us credit for you buying something, and they give us a tip. So we get, we get a... Uh, commission off of that. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. I'm going to go ahead and crimp those on and put it back in and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So this is what we're starting with. And that's what we ended up with. So I double, triple, quadruple checked and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Poific. Poific. 
and it's a tight fit because all of those nice new cramps. <laughs> Here's the old ones. Mike, I left one wire exactly how you crimped it because it was one good crimp. So there was at least one in there, Mike, that was done perfectly. You did a great job. All right, so we're uh, we're good there. I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta look this one up, see where it goes. You know, you just gotta make sure you plug everything in the right spot. A lot of times they're keyed, like see that one's a three pin connector with the middle one missing. So it goes right there because it's the only place it'll go. That one's a four pin connector with the right one keyed. So it goes right there. It's the only one it'll reach, only place it'll reach. This one, the key is on the fourth pin. So it obviously fits right there. It's perfect. It's perfect. This one though is the wrong size it looks like. So I gotta figure out what the deal is and there's no keyed keying pin in there. So I would imagine it goes like that. But we gotta we gotta check it out just to make sure. So we're plugging everything in. And what I'm gonna do is when we get it all plugged in, we'll turn the game on and uh, just make sure everything seems cool before we put the CPU in. This is all really expensive stuff, so this stuff's got a little value to it. Okay, folks, we're working through it. This connector is weird. I was, I was wondering why they're running lights on such small wires, right? And this one has big, beefy wires. Well, I had this one plugged in there. This is actually the one to the play field. And this is a J120. So in the manual, that lines up. All of these line up with where they're supposed to be. But this one, if you look, the connector's been replaced. And it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's got 10 pins. So it's got a wire on one, counting from this end. One, three, five, seven, nine, and ten. Okay. And this is the area in the manual. So that's the one that is correct. J120. It goes to the play field. This is the one we're working with here now. So it's got one, three, five, seven, nine, and eleven. So they've got the white and green wire in pin ten, which is going to be maybe one of the unused areas. So this should get a whole bunch of lights working that weren't working right or were plugged in wrong or something. But basically, I need to replace that 10-pin connector. They put the wrong one on it. It should have an 11-pin on it. So um, I'm going to see if I've got an 11-pin housing, and then we'll switch the wires over to that. And that should get that all wired up properly. Okay, folks, so we put a new connector on, crimp new pins in, put it in, and now the play field's plugged in where the play field's supposed to be, the, the back box is plugged in where the back box is supposed to be. And you might wonder, why is um, why are the wires so small, like we were talking about? Well, the reason they're so small is because all they power is the GI lights on this uh, back box panel, and there's three wires to run them. So you've got about, let's see if we can track one down. So one's white and brown, one's white and yellow, and one's white and green. So the white and green one is right here. And so it's connected to one, two, three, but not this one. That one's white and brown. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Um, connected in the 19 lamps and I think the lamps I figured this out the other day each one of them is uh, almost one watt so it's like 19 watts well that ain't nothing if you imagine a 60 watt bulb you know a 19 watt bulb it's not much if you were to swap those out to LEDs like we're going to um, it would use even less of course back then they didn't do that but so that's that uh, so each one, it just isn't running very many, so you can use a little tiny wire. Now on the play field, they may have a whole bunch more of them hooked up. So they, I guess they're running beefier wires to the play field. But that's factory. That's just how they chose to do it. We didn't put the wires in, and they haven't been replaced. Those are the original wires. Now over here, there are a couple of plugs that are identical. This is to send power places. And one plugs into 116 and one plugs into 117. There's also a spot here for 118, but there's no plug for that. 
And you had to remember that these boards were designed to work in many, 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 many games. So they were expandable. So things that aren't used on this game, you could, like this game may use 100 lights. Well, they may make a game that needs 120 lights. So sometimes they would have where they could, there was unused uh, things on the board that could be used in another game. Some of them may have more solenoids, so they need more of those. Some of them may have more lamps, so they need more of those. Some of them ha may have more switches, so they need more of those. But they didn't want to get themselves in a into a uh, back into a corner where you had to use every solenoid possible, every lamp possible, every switch possible. So they just made the board capable of doing more than uh, than the games used. Okay, so we've got that all wired in, I believe. These are going to run over to the CPU board whenever we get it hooked up. So I think we're ready to turn it on and just watch this power board and see if anything. Uh, does something it shouldn't. It was just service, so I think everything's gonna be cool. The only thing I'm gonna do is when I turn it on, I'm gonna listen and hear if anything locks on. If you turn it on and you hear a coil click or pop, like it's pulling in, turn it right back off. And then go go see what that coil is and why it's doing that. Okay, so we're going to uh, we're gonna plug it up and then we'll turn it on and see what goes on. Okay, folks, so we're gonna turn it on, see if we get anything. Look for smoke and blowing fuses. I didn't hear any coils, that's good. So you'll notice on one of these, everything looks dead. The reason it looks dead is because the... Um, what was that? Soundboard's working. Uh, the reason it looks dead is because the the uh, GI is actually turned on by the the CPU, I believe. So I, I think we're good. I didn't see anything blow. I don't see any smoking. The pen sound made some noise. It must have some way that it uh, comes up and plays a little startup jingle. There's a green light glowing, and it says green means running. So if it's running, that tells you your 5-volt power supply is probably just fine. Um, yeah, and it played a little, it played a little bit of a, uh, of a little startup noise, so. Okay, so everything's cool. The pin score display down here also has a green light on it. Everything's cool. Now, normally, I wouldn't necessarily plug that up with everything plugged in, like, like we did. But, this one was just repaired, again, by a reputable company, so I'm sure the thing works fine. And there was nothing in the cabinet that seemed shorted. Whenever we turned it on, we listened to see if any coils came on. So what could, what could happen is you turn it on and you hear click, and like this coil is stuck on. If you immediately turn it off, everything will be cool. But if you leave that on for three seconds, four seconds, it will either blow the fuse, or if it's got the wrong fuse, it will burn up one of these transistors. Um, so, yeah, no. But I think we're cool. I don't see anything acting up. Uh, next step is to pop the... the uh, the CPU in it. So let me go grab that. We're going to turn the game off and then install that. Alright, so we're all plugged up. We've got the soundboard plugged in where the soundboard goes. We've got the display plugged in where the display goes. We've got the ribbon cable plugged in. There's a power connector there. There's a few connections down here. You run into the same thing. Pins, uh, connector 206 and 207, it looks like are, are connected together and 208 and 209 are connected together. So uh, if you look in the schematics, 207 and 209 are the two that are used on this game. So again, it's just so that they have extra room to plug in extra stuff. And whenever the gentleman talked to uh, the gentleman at the repair place, he told him uh, to have somebody check it out before they plug everything in, which we just did. And he mentioned a new ribbon cable. And so Mike thought that he meant uh, that... Uh, he wanted me to get a new ribbon cable, but I think what he was telling him is that he put on a new ribbon cable. That's a new ribbon cable, and the original ribbon cable was laying in the in the back box. So I think when he sent him the boards, he sent him both of these, and I believe the guy was saying, hey, you need a ribbon cable too, so I put one in there. So I think that's the deal. But we had the ribbon cable. But you know how ribbon cables are. They often don't ribbon properly. Okay, so everything's plugged up. Uh, driver board seems fine. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn it on and see if we get anything. See if a coil locks on. Anything like that. Let's give it a go. Oh, I guess we should look up there.
Interesting. That might not be good. Hmm. I couldn't tell if it was trying to get to a home position or what, but it, it appears it's at least coming on. Let's turn it back on and see if that moves a little bit more or if it's stuck now. Okay, yeah, everything's cool. Okay, I'm going to put this uh, display up since nothing's frying. Uh, I'm going to put the display up so we can read the display and see if we're getting anything on that, and then we'll talk a little bit about that motor. Okay, so we'll turn it on just for a second just to see if our display works. Perfect. Great. Looks beautiful. Check her out, folks, in all her glory. All right, I'm, I'm not going to leave it on, though, because that motor running like that. Okay, so like we talked about, whenever it turns on, you want to see if anything's stuck on. Well, the motor didn't, didn't immediately turn on. Right? But it did as soon as the CPU booted up. Um, if it was a coil, I would have turned it right off. But it was a motor, so I let it run a little bit because the motor was actually working. If the motor was getting stuck or humming or something like that, um, and they may have a relay that's turning the motor on that may be shorted or something, we'll have to look into that. But I didn't see anything obviously obvious going on. Basically, that thing, I'm sure, has a home position. There'll be a switch that it's trying to hit somewhere or something to that effect. And instead, it's just running over and over and over again. But we can figure that out. That won't be any big deal. But yeah, everything looks like it's uh, working pretty good. We just need to work through it and uh, get everything working right. And then there's a ton of cosmetic stuff to do. So we got the flippers wired properly. We got the boards reinstalled and brought them up safe where we... We were able to check them out as we did it to make sure everything was cool. We got the uh, connector in the back box fixed, and then we found the other connector that needed fixed that we didn't know about, but we got it fixed. And now it's at least kind of uh, booting up, but we have the motor running constantly on the faces. That might be the attract mode, but I doubt it. I doubt it's supposed to run all the time because it would a lot, lot more wear and tear on the motor. So uh, we'll figure that out next time, though. But I think that's pretty good for this edition of Joe's Classic Video Games. All right, so leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. We're going to make this thing work and look great. Give us a thumbs up, people. We didn't have to do all this for you. Why, why would I film all this so I can get all you, you negative Nancys out there telling me what we're doing wrong? We didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do that. What are y'all thinking? Come on now. So uh, leave your comments below. Leave them. Uh, leave the positive ones. If if you leave the negative one, just write it out and delete it before you post it. Uh, <laughs> so we appreciate though everybody watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't already. Next time we'll get into this thing and figure out what's going on with the motor and uh, see what else we can mess with. And uh, uh, last but not least, don't forget to check out my brother Donnie. If you don't know about him, that's our actual brother, my brother Donnie. He has a channel here on YouTube. And if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines and get them back in nice working condition, which we will on this one, it's coming, then uh, you'll probably enjoy watching us work on old buildings. We're in an old building right now. Did you know that our shop here is 100 years old? Did you know that? You probably didn't. Now, I'm not 100 years old, so I made it a pinball shop 12 years ago, but, you know, it was, uh, it's been around for 100 years. We love old buildings. And so in a small town near here, in the downtown area, uh, we bought some old buildings and we are fixing them up, just like we're fixing up this pinball machine. So go check that out. Uh, I'm sure you would enjoy it. We will see you on the next video. We appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight.